from my earliest beginnings, or so they tell me, I have been a storyteller and a maker of things, transforming what I know into what I can imagine. It's no wonder that I'm drawn to theater. My background in drama schooled me in many artistic disciplines, visual design, choreography, acting, and even writing. But after 20 plus years and more than 70 productions in both professional and educational theater, I simply ran out of steam. That's when my work took a dramatic shift into visual art. One morning in 1990, while working on a one-woman play, Hildegard of Bengen, I woke from a dream with the words, you need to paint, and so I did. And what emerged from following that year-long intuitive journey of painting and writing the play is a series of five large pieces of art that told me my own story. That year changed my life. I like process and I'm drawn to materials that can be transformed. For that reason, I came to paper. Paper making is a hugely physical process and it takes time, time to transform grasses into pulp, because fibers need to be boiled, beaten, and then reformed into sheets and pressed. For my paper making, I share studio space at the Southwest School of Art, where I have access to a Holland beater and a hydraulic press. But for my work in wax, I prefer the more intimate, meditative space of my own studio. In 2002, I began working with encaustic as a medium for adding imagery and color to my canvases. I love that both these mediums, paper and wax, have century-old histories and by their very nature are organic and renewable. As a former dancer, I like that wax in its molten state incorporates movement as an essential quality in both its application and its essence. I can move with it as I layer and excavate. My work is often about ordinary images that momentarily capture our fancy, the way water ripples over rocks in a low running stream, the way the spools of thread line up in grandma's sewing box, or the way an old chain catches the sun. I am intrigued by the textures and shapes around me. I usually limit myself to a minimalist color palette, choosing to let the richness of the beeswax and the surface of the paper speak for itself. I often use organic materials, such as rust or the marks of a torch, to inform the paper before I even apply the wax. My work has often been described as halfway between painting and sculpture. My themes tend to run toward the spiritual. My images still arrive in dreams or flashes of intuitive insights. One of these moments, a few years ago, led me to sculpture. I'm at home in sculpture. Dance, you see, is about form and space and theater incorporates stage and lighting and setting and audience. Sculpture is somehow a visual representation of both dance and drama for me. I like that my sculpture can command the space, 
or sit in a small area and draw the viewer to itself. I have been an instructor at Artful Gatherings since 2014. I came originally, I think, just because teaching online was a new challenge. But I've come back year after year because of the community. I find an affinity here with students who are generous of spirit and open to new ideas. I like that. But best of all, we have fun. Here at Artful Gathering, they call me the Wax Lady because my classes cover various aspects of encaustic painting. My previous classes are now out on DVD and include a basic introduction to the medium, the magic of three approaches to encaustic painting, using wax to enhance photography, encaustic photography, the new dark room, and my signature process using handmade paper and foam to correct, uh, create the perfect support for encaustic painting, wax plus paper equal wonderful, and a book I've written on that same topic. In class this summer, we will explore cold wax, a distant cousin to encaustic. I call this workshop painting by intuition because the process is a little bit like finger painting and a whole lot like discovering the content while you work. There isn't another medium that has the ability to layer and excavate to conceal and reveal. With hot wax, there are a lot more processes um, than with cold wax. You know, I can't... <laughs> This is not a technique. It's something that I've discovered that this makes a nice, interesting stamp. But most of what you will discover, most of what you will learn, you'll learn by doing. In cold wax, we work with the wax emulsion, so there's no need to heat or fuse. In fact, there are no studio requirements for this type of painting, other than the normal precautions that you would need with working with any art. With the exception of the cold wax itself, there are no specialized materials to purchase, making this an especially good, good class if you want to get up and running quickly. So I invite you to join me, the wax lady, in learning this exciting new way to paint and an especially satisfying way to let your artist, your inner artist, play.